You might think you need a PhD to work in quantum computing, but in fact, you do not. My name is Ari. I'm a quantum hardware engineer at IBM Quantum, and I do not have a PhD. I have a master's degree in electrical engineering. And in fact, I work with many people who don't have PhDs. I work with a lot of people who have master's degrees. I work with a lot of people who have bachelor's degrees. And in fact, I work with one person who only has a high school diploma, and he builds quantum computers and touches quantum computers every single day. So obviously, you don't need a PhD to work at IBM Quantum or some of the other big players in quantum computing. Now, what can happen sometimes is you look at all these job requirements and they all say PhD required, PhD required. And that might honestly be true for some of these companies. But the reason why, especially the startups, is if they're started by people who went to get their PhD coming out of grad school, you know, they still kind of have this bias towards people with PhDs. They think that you need to go through kind of the same pain as they did. Otherwise, you're not going to have the right skill set. But really what's happening in quantum computing and how the industry is shifting is we're focusing more on results. How do we actually build a quantum computer that is big enough and scalable so that we can actually revolutionize the world and run useful quantum algorithms? And the only way to do that is with people with the right skill set. And I'm not, and I'm not saying a PhD isn't going to give you the right skill set. Of course, doing a PhD can be very, very fulfilling and give you a really deep set of skills that can be applicable to quantum computing, but it's not a requirement. And so what's going to happen is quantum is going to need people who can deliver the results that, are, that will bring us a quantum computer that's going to be able to run useful algorithms. It has enough qubits, that error corrected qubits, that is, that can run useful algorithms. And the way that we're going to do that is we hire people who have the skills that we need. And doing a PhD doesn't necessarily always give you skills at writing FPGA code or learning how to write firmware or learning how to design boards or learning to be a microwave engineer. Yes, you can get all of those things in a PhD, but more often than not, you can get those with a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. I think right now, um, the industry is very much so leaning towards people with master's degree. I think that's the sweet spot if you want to kind of optimize your skill set and get into quantum computing as soon as you can. But also, if you're somebody who's an industry professional, you're an, in, you're an engineer right now, you can actually quite easily transition into quantum computing without a PhD because you have a tangible and useful skill that could be applied to quantum computing. So let's say you're a chip designer at some company, right? You do um, radio frequency integrated circuit design. You don't have to know what that is if you don't know what it is. I'm just using it as an example. You know how to do that. You could apply to IBM and Google and all these other places that are trying to build ASIC or application-specific integrated circuits for quantum control systems. If you're somebody that is a firmware developer at, let's say, a, a medical technology company. You could easily just convert your skills into writing firmware for the control electronics that go around a quantum computer. There's tons of different avenues. So if you have a practical, tangible skill, you don't need a PhD. And so those companies that say PhD required, um, you know, you might not be able to work there because they think they need a person with a PhD, but eventually they're going to realize that they don't and they need somebody who's going to be able to drive results. And again, I'm not saying anything bad about PhDs. I work with a lot of PhDs and PhD people that I work with are exceptional. But I'm saying you don't need to be the person with a PhD necessarily always. And I know this is kind of changing in the industry because that's how IBM is hiring. They're now kind of dropping the requirement of the PhD you go and look at some of the open requisitions, they're dropping that requirement on the PhD and now trying to get people with bachelor's and master's degrees because they kind of have the right baseline set of skills. So they very quickly start applying their skill set to quantum computing and solving some of the problems that we have in scaling up quantum computing. So especially if you're an engineer in industry right now, do not go back and get a PhD unless you really want to, right? Um, but I would recommend not doing it. If you just want to work in quantum computing and that's kind of your end goal, Focus on developing the skills or broadening your skills or deepening your skills such that you can make some sort of tangible application of your skills to quantum computing. That's going to be the most important thing. Going and getting a PhD is not going to really help you um, in the long run because you're going to be paying a lot of opportunity costs. You could really kind of hone in and focus on developing your skills so that you can apply it to quantum computing than kind of going through an entire PhD, doing a bunch of coursework, writing a thesis, doing five years of research, six years of research in a lab, it's going to kind of delay your, your career quite a lot. And that's kind of the main downside of a PhD is you pay a gigantic opportunity cost of your time and your life. But don't get me wrong, you learn a lot of things and you become very deep in a specific subset of the field of engineering or physics that you're learning, but it might not be the most efficient route for you personally. So the whole point of this video is just telling you that you don't need a PhD. And I get this question all the time. There are people on LinkedIn, people finding my email and emailing me. They say, oh, I don't know what to study and do, should I go back? I'm in, I'm in industry and should I go back and get my PhD? And honestly, 
I'm just answering the question right now. No, you don't need to do that. You don't need a PhD in the first place. You want to find out what you want to do. So if you really are somebody that wants to design, let's say, superconducting qubits from kind of the more physics level, uh, then yeah, maybe you need a PhD. But if you don't want to do that and you want to do control electronics, or let's say you're a firmware engineer in industry and you like writing firmware and you just want to do it with quantum computing, you already have the skill set. Just like start developing a little bit more skills in the quantum space. Start educating yourself about quantum. To figure out how you can apply your skill set to quantum computing. So if you're one of those people that wants a little bit more guidance or wants to know how you can transition your career in engineering to quantum computing, click the top link in the description and sign up for that. You can literally send me an email to my personal email and I'm here to help you out transition your career from engineering to quantum computing. Or if you're an engineering student, help you best prepare to then build a career in quantum computing. So click that top link in the description. Do good work, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.